How's it going guys? Will here and behind me is one of the three new Apple products I've ever bought in my life. This iMac and um, in this hand I got some RAM. So as it turned out the other day I could get a really good price on this. You can never have too much RAM so I thought we'd start this video by upgrading my iMac. And the reason I bring up that it's one of the three new Apple products I've ever bought new, the others were my iPod Touch 4th Gen and the 2020 iPhone SE. And the reason I bring that up is because today we're going to be talking about things you need to look out for when buying a used phone. So, let's do this. So the first tip I have for you is pretty obvious. Be sure to, whether you're buying it online or in a shop, check the condition of the device. In store, this is generally a little bit easier because you get to see it up close. For example, when I bought my Nintendo Switch, there were two for the same price. So I asked if I could have a look at both. I held them under the light, looked for scratches, things like that. One was better condition than the other. So I bought that. And it's the same with phones. It's important to check the physical condition. Now online, typically this can be a little bit harder simply because of how people sell phones. So the reason you need to be especially careful when verifying this online is because of the condition grading that online sellers use. Now some will go with the traditional grade A, B, C, D, etc. Sorry about that, just had to move because my Gorillapod is more than two months old. As I said, I personally think the best system is to have photos of the phone and then describe them as like pristine, good, well used and then faulty. However, you do need to watch out, especially with the eBay shops I've found. Lots of them will say things like grade A++, grade A+, grade A, grade B. So make sure to read the condition description because it might end up being the grade A. Well, that sounds like really great condition, might not actually be that great. So yeah, first tip, make sure you thoroughly check the condition. So my next tip leads on from this, but it has more to do with functionality. Make sure to check the water resistance if you're buying a water resistant phone. This is because sometimes, especially if you're buying a refurbished phone, a lot of the time refurbishers will have to replace the screen and often this can get rid of the water resistance. It is very important that you make sure that your phone is still water resistant because this way, if it doesn't have water Water resistance, you can either choose a new phone or you can accept that it doesn't have water resistance and be careful with that. This also means that if it says water resistant and it's not, then you'll be alright if you get it wet and something goes wrong. I actually think I have had this issue in the past, but I haven't got burnt because of it, so yeah, make sure that you check whether your phone is still waterproof or not. Just wanna say, I know I usually wouldn't make a video like this, <laughs> like this, but such a nice day today. I just wanted to get outside and make something. Even though the evening is closing in, it's currently 12 minutes past four. Still really nice weather. By the way, just want to verify, I am still using the iPhone XR. As I said in my previous vlog style video, I think I am finally outgrowing the iPhone X. The battery is now no longer what it once was. So yeah, I am now actively looking for something else. I don't think I'll be sticking with the XR. To me, I do still find the single camera a little bit limiting. I would prefer a dual camera system or a three camera system. But yeah, I think I think it is finally time for me to move on. Next, we're going to be talking about another really important factor when choosing a refurbished phone. Make sure to check the battery condition. Sellers will list this usually in a battery percentage. It'll usually read something like battery health 95% or something similar. I've generally find buying 95% or higher will pretty much lead to a flawless experience. I wouldn't recommend going below, I'd say like, I'd say like 89%. I think that's a good point to stop. That is, of course, unless you want to take the time to refurbish it yourself and like replace the battery. But yeah, if you just want a phone that works, I'd probably not actually recommend going Going below 90%. Once you start going into those lower battery percentages, your battery won't last as long, and occasionally, if it's really low, then you may have a couple of issues. I remember I once had a phone with really bad battery issues. It kept shutting off at like 50%. It would go down to 50%, then all of a sudden it would say it was flat. I'd turn it on half an hour later, and it was at like 45%. So, yeah, if you want to avoid frequently plugging in your phone, make sure you choose a phone with good battery health. Oh, and by the way, I know I was talking about the Gorilla Pod earlier. I'm just gonna technically. <laughs> It is working. Let's uh find somewhere else. Just like that, just like that. Was never gone so fast. I wish I could film with this field as a background more often. It's just 
There's nowhere to put the camera unless I bring like a full tripod, which is certainly not convenient, especially as like this is a road. Can't just leave a tripod in the middle of the road. Weather's starting to look kind of choppy. I might have to head home soon. I really don't fancy getting rained on today. So the next thing I'd recommend you check when buying a refurbished or used phone is the camera. No, this sucks. Hold on. No, it's worse. I'm just gonna walk and talk. As I was saying, make sure to check that the camera is fully functioning. Again, if you don't want a repair project. Things I recommend looking for are whether it's got any scratches or not, whether things like the portrait mode work, whether the stabilization works, and other things of that nature. I think this is especially important nowadays. More and more people are using their phones to take photos, and there is quite a lot that can actually go wrong with a camera. So I do think, to avoid any hassle later on, you should just, before you buy, make sure to check whether or not the camera fully works. Just gonna wait for that to pass so it doesn't completely ruin my audio. All right, so the final definitive thing I'd recommend verifying is that the face slash touch ID slash whatever unlock system that phone uses, make sure that that is fully working. Because sometimes I know, especially with the older iPhones, a lot of the time when people would go to replace the screen, the fingerprint sensor would actually stop working. And so especially on eBay, a lot of the cheaper listings don't actually have a working touch ID. So make sure if you want a device with touch slash face ID, make sure that you verify this before you buy it. I I personally think this is a pretty huge issue because remember this doesn't just affect things like unlocking but it can also affect things like iCloud passwords and of course the Apple slash Google wallet. Also to my knowledge while it is pretty easy to have like a battery replaced or just to like replace the screen if it's slightly scratched fixing either the face ID or the camera are both significantly harder to do so if you go into this intending to like buy a repair project make sure that you know what you're doing. All right guys so I know this has been a quick one and of course there are other considerations you might want to make such as accessories or warranty there are other things you you can choose to look for, but I find that if you get those five things down, then you will usually get a great experience when buying a refurbished phone. Alright guys, so that's it for today. As always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this, then smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now, and I will see you guys in the next one.